In the previous cart pole tutorial, PID control was used to stabilize an inverted pendulum. PID control is efficient and easy to use. But there are also several other methods which are worth mentioning about. In this tutorial we will explore two methods of stabilizing an inverted pendulum. The first is LQR. LQR stands for Linear Quadratic Regulator. An engineer designs state cost matrix and input cost matrix. The feedback gain is calculated automatically by minimizing the value of the cost function. The second is Q-learning. Q learning is one of the reinforcement learning methods. The Q in Q learning stands for quality. Quality here represents how useful a given action is in gaining reward. Now let's talk about the difference between classical control and modern control. In classical control, transfer functions are used. Transfer function is a mathematical function which theoretically models the system's output for each possible input. A transfer function has just one input and one output. Classical control is generally used for systems that are simple enough to be tuned online by hand or by simple experiment. So, it is difficult to implement it for multivariable cases such as airplane control systems. In modern control, a set of first-order differential equations is used to describe system input-output dynamics. Since feedback gain is calculated mathematically, theoretically optimal feedback gains can be calculated. But to get good results, the system should be represented by an accurate differential equation. So, what is LQR? Let's assume that we have a continuous time linear system. The state space equation is described like this. Now we define the feedback gain F. The purpose of LQR is to compute the optimal control inputs UT, that is the feedback gain F which minimizes the next cost function. In this cost function, Q is called state cost matrix. Q defines the relative importance of each state in the state vector. R is input cost matrix. R penalizes actuator effort. Choosing a large value for R means trying to stabilize the system with less energy. And choosing a small value for R means we don't want to penalize the control signal. Value U which minimizes equation 1 is described like this. Here P is found by solving the Riccati equation. In this tutorial we will not discuss how to solve this equation since there is a lot of reference material on the internet. Using the equation 2, feedback gain is denoted like this. In this part we are going to derive state space equation of an inverted pendulum. Here some knowledge of Lagrangian mechanics is required. This is a model of an inverted pendulum. Force F is applied to the blue part to keep the pole as straight as possible. Firstly, the center coordinates of gravity of the pole are obtained. Then the first derivative of the xg and yg is obtained. Note that x and theta are assumed to be functions of time. Next, dynamic energy of translational movement is obtained. Now, by adding dynamic energy of the cart in the pole, dynamic energy of the whole system is calculated. Calculating potential energy of the whole system is simple. If the center of the pole rotation point is taken as a reference, the potential energy is expressed like this. Lagrangian of this system is represented by subtracting potential energy from dynamic energy. Note that in the x direction, we assume that external force is applied to stabilize the pole, so the force should also be added to the equation. After performing differentiation, the equation of motion will look like this. To make the calculation easier, we assume that theta is nearly zero. This means that cosine theta will be nearly equal to one, and sine theta will be nearly equal to theta. Note that this assumption is valid only when theta is very small. And if theta becomes bigger, this assumption is not accurate anymore. 
by converting equation 3 into the matrix format, a state space model is obtained. Now let's do the simulation. To run the simulation, download the cart poll LQR zip file from the Google Drive and execute the launch simulation file. As you can see, we are able to make the pole stay vertical. But with this model, the cart oscillates and eventually the pole will fall. So, further improvement to the model is probably required. Now about the second method, reinforcement learning. Let's see how reinforcement learning works. We have an agent and an environment. The agent acts in the environment according to a policy. The action is interpreted into a reward and a representation of the state, which are fed back into the agent. The purpose of reinforcement learning is to learn an optimal policy that maximizes the reward. There are two learning methods for reinforcement learning. Value-based method and policy-based method. With the value-based method, Agent learns quality function which represents value of an action in each state. On the other hand, in the policy-based method, the policy is learned directly. This method is valuable when, for example, the state space or the action space are massive or infinite since it is not possible to calculate quality function for every state. In this tutorial we are going to use the value-based method. This is the function that calculates quality of a state action combination. Here is the meaning of each term. The first term represents how fast does Q change. In the second term we set how much influence a reward will have on the next Q value. The third term represents the maximum reward that can be obtained from the next state. Here is how Q learning method is implemented to solve the cart pull problem. In almost all physical problems, values such as velocity, displacement, force are continuous. So, the value should be discretized. In this simulation, pole angle, pole rotational velocity, cart displacement and cart velocity are discretized in six stages. Q function will have 6 to the 4th power which is 1296 states, and 2 actions. Two actions means that depending on a state, force in left or right direction is applied to the cart. Now a word about reward. Setting reward properly is very important for learning the right policy. In this simulation, while the pole angle is within 0.4 radians, the agent gains a reward each time step. But the reward decreases according to the displacement of the agent from the initial point. Also, if the pole falls, the agent gets a penalty proportional to the remaining number of time steps. Now let's do the simulation. To run the simulation, download the cart pole Q learning zip file from the Google Drive and execute the launch simulation file. In this simulation, the epsilon greedy algorithm is used. So, at the first steps of the simulation, the cart often moves randomly, to explore rewards for various actions and states. But as learning moves on, the agent uses calculated Q values more often to make decisions. Now the simulation ends. From this graph we can see that reward increases over time which means that the policy to keep the pole vertical is learned correctly. 